I remember ice skating around Prince Alfred Park when we first moved from the country to the city and they'd play the Beatles relentlessly and then of course also the Stones and the Kinks and the Who and Freddie and the Dreamers and Dave Clark Five and all those British beat bands which influenced people of our generation so much and then got absolutely fascinated by what was happening musically in the 60s. They actually wrote stuff about things. So if you had a great melody and you had great lyrics and you had a great beat and then you also were talking about something really important to, to ordinary people's lives, then that was a killer combination. I think it was quite um, scary sometimes, particularly with Jim in the corner, the roar, the rhythm and the drive. It wasn't rhythmic or timely, it was, it was urgent. It was urgent and threatening. It was like, you know, it, it, it would make the hair, it was making the hair stand up on my things, thinking about it, you know, the power that we could create when we're in form. just doing covers and, and Rob was the singer all the way through school and the school concert that we played at my school was hilarious because we did a lunchtime concert and in the middle of the concert the headmaster ran up on the stage and just turned all the amps off it, and then ran off and there was about 300 people in the hall going what you know and that was just what we were dealing with like we were just schmucks to these people like you know the, the, the people at the school that were really into rugby and they were really into sort of the military and it was just sort of not a good place for a slightly sensitive and artistic person to be. setting the gear up, the monitor engineer, Mark Edwards, said, I'll show you how everything gets set up, and I'll show you once, and that's it. You remember it after that. And I didn't care. I thought I'm only going to be here for a day. And as he was setting things up, he kept, I kept asking questions. I mean, why are you nailing the drum kit to the floor? Like, we had sandbags, and I'd done that before. And then he was tuning the monitors, and he put this small road case at the base of this really tall microphone stand, and I said, what the hell's the microphone so tall for? And he said, you'll see, you'll see. And they didn't do a sound check that day. And um, sure enough, they after the support act, they went on stage and I saw all right in the first song, they fucking destroyed it. The whole stage near caved in. I've never seen anything like it, never. The first encounter of the, <laughs> the first kind uh, was at the Narrabeen Antler. This tall bloke got our curiosity, he sort of had long blonde hair and there was a lot of energy on stage and there was just a, a really interesting feel with the band. And I said, look, you know, if I can get some shows, just started looking for the rooms on the northern beaches that we could get them playing. You realise, wow, this is emotive. It's actually generating a lot of great ideas and that will engage debate. A call off the ultimatums could be stronger. If you do them, I reckon they can be stronger for life. You want not the same, but So I have been. As I sort of, you know, reach back into the memory vault, uh, I can remember a bunch of schoolboys sitting around, sort of, you know, frantic little guy, you know, sort of just out of school, banging away at the drums, you know, a couple of shy guys just out of school playing guitar. But uh, it was what I heard, really, I think, that um, got me more than anything else. And it was that was really the key for me. And I've always said, you know, once I heard the kick of the bass drum and just heard the way that they played, uh, I thought, you know, there's something very, very special going on here and um, who knows where it will lead.